This week marks three months since the world first heard about a newly identified disease. I am, of course, talking about COVID-19, which is caused by a new type of coronavirus. To date, there have been over 3,000 deaths from nearly 100,000 confirmed cases in 81 countries. And this is how I know that. This is the Johns Hopkins University COVID-19 dashboard. And since it went live in January, it's gone viral in a good way by demystifying the stats and the numbers behind the spread of the disease. It's amalgamating data from many of the world's health agencies. And so, for example, right now I can see the total number of confirmed cases is just over 93,000. These are the countries where they have confirmed cases by numbers. And just as importantly, I think, this is the total number of people who have already recovered completely from the disease. And this is just one of the pop-up projects that have appeared online, aiming to demystify the glut of COVID-19 data. Community-powered site Next Strain draws together genome data shared by scientists around the world. As COVID-19 is transmitted from person to person, it can change its genetic makeup in subtle ways, allowing researchers to build a family tree that shows how the disease has spread. It's genuinely fascinating stuff. The health crisis, particularly one that's growing rapidly like the coronavirus outbreak, we really need to communicate with people about what they can do individually and collectively to try and help get this under control. But also it's important that individuals understand that if they make minor, relatively mundane changes to their behaviour, they can help us to slow the spread of this down. In 2018, the BBC ran its own experiment to simulate the spread of a flu-like disease using a network of virtually infected smartphones. For me, the show did a brilliant job of revealing how simple things like washing our hands can make a massive difference to how quickly and how far a disease spreads. On the right is what happens if we all wash our hands really well. On the left is what happens if we don't. Just look at how the spread is slowed if we follow the advice of washing our hands well and often. Posts like this are everywhere on social media, recommending good hand-washing technique and other scientifically grounded tips to try and limit the spread of germs. But they're not the only things you might find if you look online for coronavirus information. Over the past few months, social media companies have been waging their own war against a different kind of pathogen. Dubbed an infodemic by the World Health Organization, social networks have been deluged with information about the coronavirus. Some of this is correct and helpful, but a lot of it is misleading, half true or completely fake. And that's making the real information and advice much harder to find. Looking through TikTok now, and it looks like any search for coronavirus or a similar term now brings up this banner at the top and these videos from well-known organisations take up the top spots. Similarly, dubious recommendations seem to have gone. Coronavirus conspiracy used to be one of the suggested search terms. It's not anymore. Over on Facebook, it's a similar story with posts from well-known and trusted organisations taking up the top spots. So some of the kinds of misinformation that does travel around would be, first of all, not believing that there is a problem at all and this is a creation in order to try and control people. That has been seen before and is being seen now. Also, people come up with ideas of cures, whether it's drinking garlic water or whatever, people suggest that something will happen or that there's a cure out there, it's just being withheld. That is a circulating rumour at the moment. And you have to counter that, because if you don't, people will not take action in the way that you want them to. So it's really important that we get the true messaging out there and the science underpinned, and that's what we're trying to do. And if you're really interested in educating yourself on the science behind COVID-19, then Professor Ward has a free online course that should really protect you from the fake facts.